I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez broke down the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act at a Wednesday town hall. The bill included enhanced background checks for gun buyers under 21, a new federal grant program to encourage states to enact red flag laws, and the creation of a federal statute banning gun trafficking. While the New York Democrat noted that the legislation did not have everything she wanted included, she said it contains, quote, very historic gains. Take a listen as she describes what's in the bipartisan package. And to our gun reform legislation uh, that was passed um, last time that we all met here, uh, we were reeling from the mass shootings in Buffalo, Uvalde, and California, as well as many, many, many other places across the United States. Um, last Friday, the same day as the Supreme Court ruling, we actually did pass landmark gun safety legislation. Uh, you may not have heard about it because of the catastrophic ruling, uh, but this was something that we were able to accomplish. Now, does it have everything that I wanted and fought for? Absolutely not. But there are very historic gains in this legislation. So here's what it does. Um, the the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act funds state crisis intervention programs. These are known as red flag laws. It also closes the boyfriend loophole, uh, which is a huge legislative accomplishment. I would say that it is, you know, perhaps one, the, the flagship item of this bill. Closing the boyfriend loophole has been something that we have tried to do in the Violence Against Women Act um, and so many other places, but for many years, and we haven't been able to accomplish it, but we did on Friday. And what this means is that many laws and federal laws, state and federal laws, uh, only prevent a, a domestic abuser from getting a gun uh, if or from meaningfully blocking an abuser from getting a gun if only if they are married to their spouse. And so there are all of these loopholes where if you are in a relationship, if you're dating someone, if you were um, if you were dating someone and that person began to abuse you, you had much fewer protections and that person could much more easily get a gun um, because they weren't married to you. And uh, this is something that was known as the boyfriend loophole, and it was finally closed after years and years and years of, um, of work. Uh, we finally closed the boyfriend loophole last Friday. And this is also one reason that this is important is that about 73 to 75% of mass shootings have a domestic violence issue in connection right before leading up to that mass shooting. And so when we talk about mass shootings, we really are talking about men and we're talking about boys. And, um, and a lot of times people say, well, specifically this is about white men um, because of what we see of mass shootings in schools and in uh, movie theaters. But I think what we're really seeing is that this is a crisis of men and boys of all races and backgrounds uh, because the mass shootings that happen uh, or, you know, when a mass shooting happens and it's multiple people in one place in a movie theater, that, of course, gets a lot of news attention. But when it's 12 people who die due to shootings in the Bronx in, and it's 12 people who die in 48 hours or 30 people who die in 30 hours instead of 12 people who die, you know, in a very in in one to two hours, they're, these are treated very differently. But what we are seeing is that um, this is really depend regardless of when you, you know, when you zoom out uh, in set and setting, this is an issue of men and boys. And the overwhelming, there's an overwhelming correlation between, um, between mass shootings and domestic and incidents of domestic violence and particularly violence against women and LGBT people. And so closing the boyfriend loophole is going to be really important because one of the best indicators uh, that someone may be on a troubled path to a mass shooting is incidents of domestic violence. And if we can start increasing and recognizing uh, and preventing people that are engaged in domestic violence from getting a gun in the first place, we can save, potentially save a lot, a lot of lives. Um, 
the uh, the Safer Communities Act does crack down on uh, gun trafficking. And for those of us here in the Bronx and in Queens, uh, and we're seeing, uh, you know, all of these guns and all these incidents of um, of of shootings happening, those guns are not coming from the state of New York. Those guns are coming from something known as the Iron Pipeline, where very pro-gun states um, like Georgia, North and South Carolina, Virginia, et cetera, where you can just show up and get a gun easy, more easily than you can get a beer or more easily than you can drive a car, um, people are able to source and really start acquiring a lot of guns. And then what they do is that they start to just hand that off uh, to other people illicitly. And, and those guns then travel up the Eastern seaboard and they get into the Bronx and they get into our streets. And that's why federal gun laws are so critically important to helping solve our issues here in New York City. And so um, cracking down on gun trafficking is going to be a very important piece to that. Uh, it also expands background checks uh, for um, young people ages 18 to 21 who are attempting to purchase a gun. Um, and, and it also expands access to certain mental health services in schools. I want to be very clear that we should not, I personally uh, believe that we should not be leaning into this idea of mental illness and mass shootings. Um, too much because we shouldn't be stigmatizing people uh, with mental illness. Just because you may be struggling with depression or bipolar disorder or anxiety or schizophrenia, it does not mean that you are going to be or become a mass shooter. In fact, I think that what a lot of people are using as a term for mental health issues are really issues of white supremacy and um, and anti LGBT and uh, and misogynistic ideologies. And this, I personally believe that when we see with some of these war shootings, it's less. You know, there are issues of isolation present, but what we're really talking about is right wing radicalization. And people are very directly citing um, digital platforms like YouTube and Facebook uh, in and crediting what they find on YouTube and Facebook with um, with the way that they choose to act and the fact that they choose to act in such violent ways. And until we actually address that issue, um, I think we're still going to start seeing some problems from there. But that being said, um, I still believe in funding access to mental health services in schools. And so I am happy to see that that is in this bill. Um, but I also think it's important to note that we shouldn't stigmatize people uh, with um, mental illness. You know, if not the majority of people, an overwhelming amount of us uh, will struggle with mental illness at some point in our life. It doesn't mean that it's forever. Um, it could. But, you know, I think it's important that we don't stigmatize mental illness. Um, mental illness is very much like physical illness. Sometimes you get sick, you go to a doctor, uh, sometimes you can get completely bounced back, or sometimes, you know, you just have a condition that you work with throughout your life, like if you have arthritis or anything else. So I just wanted to make, uh, make sure that I reemphasize that point there. There are things in this bill that I fought for and that we all fought for that did not make it in. Um, and that is what we're kind of making sure that we keep in mind for another day. I believe that we should be reinstating the ban on assault weapons in the United States. We had a ban on semi-automatic weapons like AR-15s and it lasted until 2004. And the amount of mass shootings that we had up until that point were very, very, very low. Um, and the moment that that ban lifted, we started to see an explosion in mass shootings uh, the way that we see today. So we know that that piece is critical and key and we can't stop fighting until that and several other provisions are, um, are able to be passed as well. And we can still pro um, protect uh, the Second Amendment in the United States, but that doesn't mean that we can just allow what is happening now to continue. And so um, that's what we have there. And so from there,